Hiya folks, well today is a little bit special for us baby isn't it? We're going to be doing Christmas dinner. Christmas dinner in an air fryer. Well most of it's going to be done in the air fryer as well but we've got uh, uh, loads of ingredients for today and let's just run through them first of all to show you what we're going to be cooking up. Here's all the ingredients for our Christmas dinner. We chose a three pounds boneless turkey joint wrapped in streaky bacon, some chipolata sausages and some streaky bacon to wrap them in to make the pigs in blankets, some potatoes for roasting, some parsnips for roasting, a selection of frozen mixed vegetables, some Brussels sprouts, some green beans, a cabbage. For the cauliflower cheese, we got a large cauliflower. To make the cheese sauce, we have some grated cheddar cheese, one pint of milk and two dessert spoons of plain flour. For the Yorkshire pudding mix, we have two large eggs, the same quantity of milk and the same quantity of plain flour. We also have some sage and onion stuffing mix and some turkey gravy granules. Right, so this is what we've gone for. We find a whole turkey, you get so much waste on it, don't you? Yeah. So for years now, we've been having what you call a crown, or this is a, a new way of doing it, which is, well, I'll tell you it's a new way. This is called a, what is it? I don't know what it's actually called. We get it from our butchers. It's basically it's no bones in it whatsoever and they wrap it with turkey as well and bound it with a string. So it's one- I Actually wrap it in bacon, not in yeah, turkey. Yeah, wrap it in turkey. Wrap it in bacon. Yeah. That one only costs 13 pounds 65, but there will be no waste for that at all. And that will fit lovely into our air fryer. So- That's we'll... three pound in weight, that one. Right. We've got much bigger. That's 13 pounds in money. And yeah. the one we've got is 35 pounds in money. So you know roughly the size. And I mostly do Christmas day, we'll be cooking that in my slow cooker. But yes. I'm doing this to see, can we do a Christmas dinner? Yeah. The main bits in the air fryer. So Christmas day, our, 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 our slow cooker is obviously a lot bigger. We cook it slow, you, you just put it on yeah. and it normally cooks. But we're gonna be doing, as Sharon says, that in the air fryer, in the Kasori 5.5 litre yeah. double XL. So what we gotta do, get that in? Yeah, let's get it out of the packet. Coming in, baby. So we don't need any special treatment for this, Sharon? You're gonna no, be seasoning it up or just plonk it straight in? I'm gonna plonk it in, I might, as you can see how easy that goes in there, folks. That is a three pound turkey roll, so what to speak. I used to do, but I'm not gonna do on this because it's got bacon. I used to put butter on my turkey before yep. when it didn't have bacon on and all that. But I'm gonna wash my hands and put some pepper on it. Some yeah, pepper. so that is it, folks. And as you can see, it sits nicely diagonally into there as well. I suppose if you're on your own, Sharon, you could uh, put your potatoes in there as well, couldn't you? Yeah, you could put, and your roasted vegetables. And your roasted vegetables as well. So Sharon's just going to season it up as well, folks, so we get that going. So once you've seasoned it, we're just going to turn it over, folks, because we're going to cook the bottom first. So we'll season that as well. There we go. And we'll cook, as I say, that will go in upside down first. She's just going to wash her hands. So we're going to put this on for 170 degrees centigrade. So we're going to be doing it just for 35 minutes, just to cook on that one side, folks. And then after that, we'll turn it over and put and it on for another, put it on for another 35 minutes yeah. and see how we are then. And we will be checking it with a temperature probe, won't we? Yeah, and while that's cooking now, we're gonna wrap our pigs in blankets together. Right, so all we've got here are these chipolatas. Are they like chipolatas, Sharon? These are chipolatas, yeah. Chipolatas, you use what sausages you want. We find these work better because with a wider sausage, I'll find, Sharon, that the, um, the bacon sometimes unravels, doesn't it? Yeah. So with a smaller sausage, folks, the uh, bacon tends to stay on it. And it's much cheaper to do this yourself rather than buy these already done. Get the sausages you like and just wrap your streaky bacon or whatever bacon you want on them. So here we go, we've gone for a streaky bacon yeah. there. And it comes very thin streaky bacon, doesn't it baby? Yeah, we're literally just gonna twist it round like that. There you go. Nothing to hold it together, nothing. And you'll just, just lay like them that. in the bowl and they'll go straight into the air fryer. When the turkey's done. Yeah, brilliant. So there you go, folks. There's our pigs in blankets. We have got one left over, which we forgot, so never mind. So they're all done now. They're ready to go in the oven when we're ready, in the air fryer. Right, and now we're gonna make our cauliflower cheese. I've already uh, cooked the cauliflower ready, so I'm gonna show you now, now how to make the cheese sauce. Right, so this is our cauliflower. It's already been cooked, as Sharon just said and it's just sitting in that bowl already cooked. So you're gonna make our white sauce now, yeah. aren't you? Right, so in there, we've just put our pint of milk, and now what's happening now, baby? I've got our two dessert spoons of plain flour. Right, you're just going straight into yeah. 
the milk with that. You're not making any roux or anything. No, I never do. And then we're just going to stir it. And that's with a balloon whisk. Yeah. You've got to keep that moving. So you get no lumps. So you'll just stir that on a low flame until what? Until it starts to thicken. And then when it starts to thicken, add your cheese. Right. Right, there you go, folks. That's literally been on for a couple of minutes and it's thickening up already there, as you can probably see. So all Sharon's going to do now is literally bring in our grated cheese and just literally add our grated cheese into that mix and this will make a fantastic cheese sauce, won't it, Sharon? Yeah. And don't forget, folks, you can also put in your salt and pepper, season the sauce up as well, which we will be doing afterwards. And that will be lovely and thick. You don't want to boil it, so that's why you've got to keep it moving, folks. Okay, folks, so that's the hot sauce done. And I'm just going to pour it over the cauliflower. So look at that, folks, look. Absolutely lovely, look. Made just enough for that ramekin, look. And one thing you don't want to be short of is your white cheesy sauce, Sharon, is it, when you're making a cauliflower right. cheese? And I've just saved a bit for later when I put it in so it gives it that brown look, nice and gooey. You could even put a bit of mozzarella, whatever cheese you like, on the top. And that will brown off lovely, wouldn't it? So that's another job done. So just to finish it off, folks, just going to put a bit of seasoning on the top of that. Absolutely lovely. Don't put that cheese on that I've left for later because it'll just melt now and it'd be pointless. Yeah, so leave that. That's, right. that's the reason she's left that cheese off, folks, because it's still hot. So now we're going to be making the batter for the Yorkshire puddings. And the way Sharon does it, she's got two glasses, both exactly the same. We're going to be using two eggs and the eggs are going to be used as the measuring instrument for the other two ingredients, which are going to be milk and what flour is it, Sharon? Plain flour. Always plain flour. Always plain flour, folks. So as you can see, two glasses standing next to each other. The eggs have come up to there and all she's going to do with the flour is take the flour up to the same height in the same glass. It's got to be the same glass. Right, so them two are both the same levels. So we know now that we've got the right amount of flour for the right amount of eggs. So just tip your flour into a bowl and in that same glass, we're going to take the milk up to exactly the same level, folks. Making Yorkshire puddings is this simple, and they will rise every single time. Set it now. So in you go. Keep going. A bit more. There you go. So again, same level with the milk. So if you were making double this mix and you had four eggs in, four eggs might come up to there, you'd have the milk to go up to there and also the flour. Just the egg level, you follow all Yeah, the always time. follow just the egg level. So in all the ingredients go now, and then you'll beat that up with a balloon whisk, and that will be your perfect batter for your Yorkshire puddings. And make this nice and early so the batter can rest. Yeah, that's why we're doing it now, folks. And it makes it easier for you as well. If you get everything done, ready, you can go and mingle with your guests. So if you've got no guests, folks, we can mingle with each other, Sharon. How about that? It's a mingling. We've got guests, so. Yeah, we have got guests. We ain't cooking all this, it's just us, folks. No. Right, so I'm going to leave it to do that. I'm going to wash my hands and do a little bit of washing up for it. Right, so it's time to deal with the veg now, folks. All that veg you saw earlier on, you've chopped it all yeah. up, Sharon, haven't you? That's in our little... It's all in there. All in our big... Um, big what's that called, that pot? Cauldron? It's like cauldron, isn't it, Mark? My witch's pot. And with the potatoes and the parsnips... Are they parsnips or turnips? Parsnips. With the potatoes and parsnips, she's actually parboiled them, folks. Only because there's so many. Yeah, only because there's a lot of them. And also, she's also made up the stuffing balls. Now, you haven't got to see an instructional video how to make stuffing balls, because all you've got to do... Is you read the box? Take it out of the packet, put it in the box and add water, Sharon. Well, no, don't put it in the box. Put it in a jug. Put it in a jug. I like the boiling water. Yeah, some people dies. also add potato... Not potato, add um, a lump of butter in there as well, don't yeah. they? So you can do that if you want. So we made our stuffing balls up there. They're ready to go. All part of the preparation. It just makes it easy for you on that busy day. It is a busy day. With these, what are we going to do with You're these? We're going to tip them into that bowl for me. These are the parboiled potatoes, yeah, folks. And parsnips. And parsnips. And I'm going to get mine to put some seasoning on them and a bit of oil ready for when they do. Right. You do need to oil these, folks. Yeah. We use olive oil. You can use, especially for Christmas, you can use duck fat as well. And sometimes what I have done as well before, use some of the meat of the juices as well. And yeah, that over. so right, let's get that going then. So, nice plug of that, folks. Don't be frightened of it. Olive oil is very, very good for you. And you want it to cover everything, so we're just going to put a nice big glug in there like that. We're going in with plenty of the old 
sea salt, well, let's call it pink Himalayan salt, shall People say that uh, it's not sea salt, which it is, but there you go. Rock salt, that one. Rock salt, there you go. <laughs> So loads and loads of black pepper, folks. Stir gently because they are parboiled. Yeah. And what you can do is, if you can't stir, you can just give them a shake up, folks. Or a toss. You're doing it again, aren't you? So get all that running through, folks. Just give it a good mix up. As I say, if you parboil them, sometimes they can be a bit, 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 bit fragile, shall can't they? Yeah. But also that can help because if they, if you have boiled them a little bit too much that can create a nice fluffy Fluffy's surface there. on them and you can get a lovely crunchy surface on them as well. So that's them done, they're all ready to go. So now in theory, they're done, your stuffing's done, your meat's cooking, everything's done that you need to do. I've thought while we've got some room in here. Yeah, don't forget that's upside down folks. Yeah. Can you see what that's done? That's got another 10 minutes to go on that side Sharon. I'm going to stick a we're just going to stick a few of them in there. Try not to think of wasted space. Yeah, because there's a lot of space in there, folks. And uh, don't forget, we're, we're going to be turning this over in about yeah. 10 minutes time anyway. Well, and don't there. forget, folks, get yourself a temperature probe. Temperature probes are your friend. They let you know exactly where you are. So as you can see, in the middle there at the moment, we're only up to about 29 degrees. So it's not really cooked yet, and we knew that because we're going to be turning it over halfway and putting it on for another 30 minutes. So that's in there now. We will keep an eye on them sausages, yep. shall we? Yeah. Yep. We'll be turning them and also probably adding in more as well yep. as we go along. So we'll leave that for the moment. And when they're done, they will just be going into the oven, which is on very low, just to keep things warm because we're doing such a big dinner here. So we use our main oven and only our main oven at the bottom there, folks, as a warming oven and that will only go on to about 80 to 100 degrees yeah. centigrade, just as a warming oven. Okay, folks, we've done two halves of that now, Sharon. We turned it over halfway through. So this is just finished, and as you can see now, that's the reason why we've done the bottom half first, folks, because if we would have done that half first, that's the bit we want to be on, on show. So she's taken the uh, sausages out, they're already done. She started to put the turkey balls in there. Stuffing balls. Stuffing balls, rather. So there we go folks, you can see that the uh, temperature is over 75 degrees. So Sharon's now going to take that turkey out as it's now been cooked. There's your tongs baby. Okay. And we're just going to transfer that into a piece of foil. silver foil. We'll roll that up. Just so it can stay in juices. Yep, the keep the juices locked in, make sure you squirt the edges up. And that will go into our bottom oven which we've just put on now, and that's on a lowly 110. Can you see the remainders of the sausages in there, folks, as well? So that's the main cooking part of the actual meal done. So all Sharon's gonna do now is literally plonk the rest of them stuffing balls in. Mmm, lovely. Look at them, folks. They're going in? Yeah. Right, and how long are they going on for, baby? Put them on for 190 for 10 minutes. So we're gonna take that up to 190, and the time we're gonna do is, we're gonna take them down to 10 minutes, start the cooking, and Sharon said that she's gonna be turning them halfway through. And once they're done, what's happening then? Potatoes go in. The main part of the uh, vegetables is the ones that are gonna take the longest to cook. It's gonna be the spuds and also the parsnips. Yeah. And the final thing to cook, which you've just stood over there at the moment. Is the vegetables. Is the vegetables, which are not gonna be cooked on that stove, although we no. just put them over there. They'll be cooked on our little camping stove. Now that ready for the Yorkshire puddings, which I should put some oil in shortly, which I'll show you. And just got to warm through the cauliflower cheese as well. Yep. That's it. So don't forget folks, the cauliflower cheese is actually cooked, but that will be going into the air fryer as well, in there, just to crisp up on top and warm it through as well. Happy days, baby. Happy days, all coming together. Right, okay, so you've actually cooked our first batch of uh, veg and potatoes. Veg and potatoes? So we're just going to take the second lot out of the kasori. These were 210 for 25 minutes. Right, that's the potatoes and the parsnips. And look at them, folks. Lovely and crispy. So our oven is on over there, and these are going to go in the oven, as yeah. you know, just as a warming oven, as we mentioned earlier on, folks. And you've got one left in there, baby. There we go. So now, here's our cauliflower cheese, which we just said is already cooked. Are you just going to sprinkle that cheese on the top of me while I stick these in the oven? Right, bear with me folks. So just sprinkling the rest of that cheese folks, just over the top. 
just to give us a little golden crunchy bit on the top there. There we go. And that will go back into the air fryer. And that's going on for to 185. 10 minutes. Right, so the last bit of the jigsaw puzzle, Sharon, apart from the vegetables. And the gravy. Is preparing the ramekins. These ones, we've got a similar one on the, the link below the video, folks. And she's just putting a little splash of olive oil just in the bottom there. You can use lard if you want. And these are going to need to go into the air fryer to heat up first. Yeah. And then we'll pour our batter, which we made a little bit earlier on, into these ramekins. So we're now going to put our veg back on. She has had this on and it is actually up to temperature, folks, as you can see, with a little bit of steam coming off there. So, um, you do we, need the water boiling for your gravy, otherwise your granules won't. Yeah, because we're going to be using the water out of that to make our gravy. So that's going back on again. Leave the lid on it because it'll boil quicker. And happy days, baby. That's the yeah. last component apart from the gravy. And the Yorkshire puds. That's yeah. it. And then we're done. Then you can sit down and enjoy. Okay, folks, it's now time to pull out the, what's it called? Cauliflower cheese. Cauliflower cheese, baby. You're in, it's done. Oh, oh, Sharon. Look at that, folks. <laughs> and you've got them lovely gloves which one of our subscribers right. bought, something, you, baby? So out with the uh, cauliflower cheese and in with the ramekins now. So we're going to get as many as we can in there. We'll probably be doing these in a couple of batches as well, won't we, Cher? Yeah. Yeah, so we've got one batch there. We'll do the other batch afterwards. That goes into the oven. Yeah. These go into the uh, kasuri. To heat up. And we're putting them on for... High as possible. Right, so let's go, let's whack it up, shall we? 205 is the maximum yeah. this one will go up to. And we're just going to leave the timer at 15 minutes because yeah, we're going to... About we're, five minutes time, I will add some Yorkshire pudding and I will call you back when the first batch is done. Thank you, baby. Start it off, let that oil heat up, folks. Veg is still ticking away. Cauliflower cheese is going to go in the warming oven. I'm yeah. going to take the meat out now to rest because it's been in there warm. Of course it has, baby. Ready for you to slice. Oh, look at that, look. Everything's come together, folks, see? It's all about timing. So we're just gonna unwrap this turkey roll, folks. So juicy and succulent, this is. Oh, lovely, and we've got loads of juice in there, so you've got to be careful with that. I'll just put that in there and just remove that silver paper. Do you want to keep that juice, baby, for the gravy? Yeah, I will, I'll put it Got a lot of juice in there, folks. Me jug that I've done my stuff for then. I always let use that. So all that stuff gravy. around there goes into making a lovely gravy. So Sharon's just gonna pour that in there, folks. Right. And I'm gonna get our little carving knife. So we just carve some of this. We've got that string on there, folks. We'll just cut through that string. Get rid of that as well. So, so we'll just carve that turkey like that. And as you can see, it is very, very succulent still, folks. So I'll just carry on carving this, folks, and we'll come back to you when it's time to plate up. Right, time for the uh, batter to go in the ramekins, folks. And it should be sizzling like that, look. Can you see that? It's white outside And the night is cold Everyone's light There we go. Gently back in. We'll leave that cooking. They'll probably take seven minutes, shall we? Something like that, six yeah, minutes. Not very long at all. So back on with the veg again, folks. We are turning that on and off. And we'll just finish carving and we'll come back to you in a minute. Right, folks, we're gonna just pour that in now. Just be careful, it's gonna be hot. Use all that lovely liquor, look at that, look. If you need to top it up afterwards, just add some boiling water. Look at that. That'll make a lovely tasty gravy, that folks. All them natural juices out of that uh, veg that we've got there. We'll have a little peek inside here, folks. Oh, look at that, look. Yeah, just a quick look, folks. Otherwise, they'll sink otherwise. So gravy, done. The last four of them to do, and then we're just assembling. Fantastic. Right, there we go, folks. We've actually dished all the other lot up, and they're in there eating at the moment. Let's take a closer look at it. Okay, folks. 
Sharon's going in. What are you going for? A bit of turkey, a bit of stuffing? You're going full metal jacket? No, just that. Well? Good turkey. <laughs> is it moist? It is very I love moist. that word, is. Right, okay, folks. I know what the turkey tastes like. I've been pinching it, Sharon, I? Yeah. So I'm gonna have a little bit of turkey. I'm gonna have a bit of that, my favorite, which is the um, cauliflower cheese. I'm going full metal jacket, folks. I'm gonna have a bit of stuffing as well. Oh, look. I'm going in, folks. Oh! <laughs> You know, don't you? That is what Christmas is all about, folks. Everything's come together. We've just used our big oven as a warming oven. Everything's cooked to perfection. And providing you get your timings right, there's no reason why you can't do the majority of your cooking in an air fryer. We use the Kasori 5.5 litre there. We've also used our little hob to do the vegetables. And we use the large oven as a warming oven on our range, but just kept the temperature down. But that is absolutely fantastic, folks. Hope that's given you a little bit of an insight on how to cook with an air fryer for a large family. How many is in there, Sharon? How many have you cooked for well, in I've there? I've cooked for 10 today. 10? 10. There you go, that's folks. including baby frames, you could say nine and a half. Nine adults and a little baby frame. Yeah. So there you go, all done with just the air fryer and our little hob. So it can be done. You just got to get your time into it. Well, I, we're going to go and have this now yes, and enjoy that. Don't forget, binge watch our videos. Have a little look at our rare fry videos, slow cooker videos, and also our general cooking and videos Merry as well. Merry Christmas. And don't forget to check out our vlogs as well. Yes. With a lot of people who enjoy our vlogs where we have a bit of fun in them as well on a Sunday. Anyway, thanks very much, folks. We're going to have this now. We'll see you in the next video. Until then, bye, bye. for now. Come on, baby. Let's go.